Good morning, everybody. Dear colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by saying to Euroform, thank you very much for your kind invitation. Indeed, this event has become one of the unmissable staging posts in the data protection calendar, an event which is unmissable for, for you and for me personally also. But this year, 10 days from the launch of DDPB, I may be permitted to pray forgiveness for not being able to join in person. You have a full agenda for the day with so many esteemed speakers lined up and more important lunch is, is waiting. So I have kept these recorded remarks as brief and uh, short as, as possible. There are so many words which have been printed and spoken about the GDPR that there is not much left to, to say. Now is the time for, for action, not for, for words. And judging by their actions with two weeks to go, you can discern at least three big groups of controllers. First, there are the ones, perhaps the majority, which say the rules are changing and we are adjusting to them. But basically, it's business as usual. And these tend to be the firms which are already generally confident that their practices are compatible with the EU law on data protection. Second, there are those which say you need to agree to our privacy policies before the 25th of May or you will not longer be able to use our services. And these are companies whose main objective is to protect themselves, not the citizens. Third, there are a growing number of service providers who are saying we will probably not be fully GDPR compliant, so we are getting out of here. And this category includes a lot of companies, typically free services, whose data policies have already been questioned in, in the past. In fact, there is even a service out there now which promises to allow you to avoid the GDPR. Yes, it actually misspells the acronym. It claims to offer JavaScript software which will block all EU users from your website, so you do not need to comply. Sadly, when I checked last night, the website of this ingenious service was unable due to maintenance downtime or capacity problems. Joking aside, there are signs of a significant realignment of priorities in the decisions which businesses are taking. Certain behavior has become too risky. But also opportunities are opening for controllers who want to show their customers and potential customers that they care about them. Caring about customers has come to include caring about what happens to the data about them. This is a problem for the dominant business model in much of the world outside Europe. And under this approach, there is an assumption that you must first collect as much data as possible and then seek ways to monetize it. You should worry about the consequences only after the consequences have been materialized. And now some criticize the GDPR for being too prescriptive rules on when and how to conduct the data protection impact assessment, the job description of data protection officers, and all the other detailed modalities might be considered as gilding the lily. But these provisions are a signal of the consumer mistrust which has come to suffuse uh, digital markets. The EU is trying to steer controllers away from harmful practices. It is trying to incentive greater digital customer care. And this is, that is because it looks like the market on its own is not delivering a fair distribution of the digital dividend. Now, I do not believe that the GDPR, in all its beautiful complexity, can enough to address entirely this challenge. Thus, we have been experiencing in the last few weeks the, let's say, cognitive dissonance of being confronted with on all sides with demands to click to accept new terms and conditions. It is a lesson that the GDPR was never going to change behavior overnight. Powerful controllers cannot be expected suddenly to treat ordinary users as equals. 
What I predict is that as people become more informed about their rights under the GDPR and also the role of a newly established DPA, they will start to demand changes. The competitive advantage of treating online consumers with respect and being seen to treat consumers with respect will perhaps become more, more real, real. And this new dynamic cannot be reduced to a binary question of informed, specifically and freely given consent versus legitimate interest. Whatever legal basis is settled upon as appropriate for a given processing operation, companies remain accountable for the consequences, including unintended ones. So consent is not a license to exploit a vulnerable, distracted or addicted data subjects through, for instance, video games, personality tests, as in the Cambridge Analytica case, life hacks or any other means of eyeball entrapment. Equally, legitimate interest is not a blank check to permit use of data for any purpose which promises to generate revenue. The last few weeks have also revealed a need to talk about other aspects of the GDPR which could be interpreted in ways not fully respectful for the individual. This includes the notion of a necessary for the performance of a contract and also scientific research. We are seeing in real time how the right to data protection is meant to complement and safeguard the rights to privacy. And these are stricter rules on collecting and using data revealing political views, sexual orientation and religious views, and on data which reveal information about your communications. The proposed e-privacy regulation is essential, in my view, not only to ensure a living playing field, to avoid penalizing telcos and giving the amorphous so-called tech companies a free pass. It is essential to steer companies away from using information which people expect to remain confidential. It is essential to give people more confidence that when they send a message or an email that it will not be passed to a career. So it is also essential to free up the market so that people can better choose not to be trapped in wallet communities where the information served to them is determined by an opaque, unaccountable revenue maximizing algorithm. And this, as much as anything, is the cause of the fake news. And let me say also the micro-targeting scandal. Publishers and advertisers, as well as individual users, lament their lack of control in the highly concentrated digital information ecosystem. E-privacy, therefore, remains essential to help unblock the system, to decentralize and to allow different models which do not depend on constant tracking but which give people uh, perhaps more control over what happens to their information online. Again, a modern and reasonable uh, set of e-privacy rules will not be a panacea. The systemic problems cannot be entirely fixed by a consequent uh, uh, upset, uh, by a constant requirement. However, uh, tightly we redefine the notion of consent. But this is an essential missing piece of the puzzle. With e-privacy, the EU will have a sort of a comprehensive framework for personal data processing and confidentiality of communications for the artificial intelligence generation. Our job as independent regulator is to be more predictable, accessible, consistent, selective, to focus resources on tackling the most harmful behavior. In two weeks, we, we will launch all together the EDPB. I think we will be more or less the same faces uh, around the table as uh, we still are uh, with the Article 29 Working Party. The architecture where we meet the types of the subgroups uh, will be perhaps uh, a little bit of more continuity than change, but it will be a fresh start with a fresh mandate to work in an entirely different spirit of collegiality to reach uh, consensus on all matters of a cross-border nature. EDPS has done its part in providing 
let me say proudly, a world-class secretariat which is already in place in terms of personnel, accommodation, IT facilities, communication tools. And as a full member of the board, my, also, my role is also to support the uh, new chair as a loyal and proactive colleague and to place the European perspective uh, at the heart of all our deliberations. So we are about to enter a new era for digital rights and responsibilities, so fasten your seat belts. What else? Let me thank you for listening. Let me uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the conference. Let me apologize once again for not being uh, with you in, uh, in person. Uh, I promise next year to, to be back to Berlin. Thank you for your attention.